Hey everyone, this is Alan over at Cobblers Plus. Today we got a pair of these uh, Birkenstock Milanos that we're just gonna do a regular full sole on it. The cork is still in pretty good tact, so we're not really needing to do much else to it. Um, we'll buff up the uppers on the leather a little bit. This is one of the leather versions. Birkenstock does have also what's called their Burkett floor. That's um, a man-made material, but is one of the most durable ones that we've found. Now, it's got a little bit of wear into the cork here, but it's actually just barely hitting that cork. It actually hasn't really worn into it. So all we're gonna really do is just uh, put on some new soles on these. You'd be surprised how much money you can actually save instead of having to buy a new pair every single time uh, with just resoling it. If you catch it in time without damaging that cork and keep an eye on maintaining that cork, you can actually save quite a bit of money versus having to buy a new pair every single season or every couple of seasons. So um, we're going to start out with, uh, of course, sanding down this bottom here. You guys will see that in just a little bit. And we're going to put on one of these original Birkenstock soles. Now, you can see this one's kind of misshaped. Um, sorry, I got my boys here today, Vlad and Sebastian, making a little noise. But um, you can get sheets, and that's what we usually do. Um, kind of lost my train of th thought here, but we get sheets like this in from Birkenstock directly. You know, because we do quite a bit more um, repairs, we don't tend to get pre-cuts like this here, just because these pre-cuts are a little, little too large. So you have a lot of access left over and it's a lot more wasteful. This way we're able to control how much we need, how much we're cutting off. Now we're gonna have access, of course, like on the corners and everything, so that's normal, but I just kind of put them on there you know, trace them out and everything. Once it's adhered, I'm able to cut it and then trim it out. But you've got the option to do the original Birkenstock sole. Um, unfortunately for cobblers, we only have three options in color that can come in. That's gonna be black, brown, and white. That's all, no other colors. So if you have a pair of Birkenstocks with orange or blue, unfortunately Birkenstock does not want to send that out to any cobblers. I've talked to their sales rep a few times about it and they're just not wanting to do it. Um, option is also you can go with a alternative such as an aftermarket sole. It will cost a little bit more usually with most aftermarket soles, but it is a little bit of a denser material also from most of them, like the Vibram, for example. This is a good sample. These are some thinner materials here, but they come in multiple different colors. And this is their little skeleton one. It's got a little skeleton pattern on it. And it does grip a lot better too. Um, so if you're somebody that tends to wear them in bad areas, um, it'll definitely, definitely come in handy for you. And because it's a rubber, not a um, blown, uh, crepe rubber like they have here it's literally um like it's it's literally a sponge material it's inflated and has little air pockets making it a blown material it's much softer not quite as dense but it will still last you a fair good while upgrading you can definitely do so upgrading to a vibram there's a lot of different colors and tread patterns thicknesses and different combinations that you can pick from but like I said, for today, we're just going to do a regular original Birkenstock sole. So we're going to go ahead and uh, sand these out. Um, unfortunately, when you start trying to pull this sole off, you can't uh, without damaging that cork in some form or way. So we'd rather just sand it off and go from there. So I'll see you guys back in a second. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sand this. All right, so we're at our machine here about to sand it. So we're just literally going to sand it up and then rough up the bottoms here a little bit more so it adheres better. Give you an idea, I'll just sand one shoe and one of the strips of the soles. Once we're done, we'll just meet you guys back up at the workbench after I sand out the first sandal and one strip of the sole that I already have pre-cut. I'm going to have to turn my hat around so it doesn't get in the way here for you. Okay. <laughs> probably see in the background here we got my son Sebastian
gives you an idea, but you can probably see there's a lot of spots that are left over from the original sole. But that's actually because we don't want to sand these too deep because this is a cork. It's very delicate when it comes to sanding it and everything. So it's better to leave a little extra behind, especially for these little spots here. It works very well as a filler to fill in those particular spots that have been worn in and broken in by the person wearing these. So that's how we're gonna leave it. It'll actually bind and adhere very well to the same material. So we're done with this shoe now at this point. I'm just gonna sand up a strip of this. There we go, just to rough it up enough because this is a, let me turn this off. Because this is a heavier grit sandpaper. It's 24 grit, fairly rough and we're just gonna rough it up enough to give it a good surface area. All right, but like I said, I was just gonna record just the one shoe that I was gonna do, one sandal. Gives you an idea right there. And, um, you know, I'll meet you guys back at the workbench and we'll go from there. See you in a second. All right, so we're back here over again. We've got them all sanded out. I don't know if you guys heard me too much with the noise of the machine. This is Sebastian here. He's kind of learning as well. But anyways, we sanded this out and you can see some of that old sole left over and that's normal actually. Um, and we'd prefer to do that just because it also leaves a little bit of a good buffer here in between the, um, the gap of these two strips of the uppers here that come underneath the sole or underneath the footbed in between the sole and the footbed. So it kind of gives it a nice little even buffer instead of having that, uh, that 90 degree angle drop right there. Um, some of you may understand it, you know, you've had somebody do it, uh, do a repair or resole, and then you can kind of feel that that uh, little lip from the leather for just a little while while you're still breaking them in. Now, cork is very malleable. It's one of the best agents for supporting, definitely. So it forms very quickly, but there is a bit of a break-in period with Birkenstocks because of their arch support. So we're going to undo the strap first. All right, uh, I'm gonna blow it off some compressed air. Just make sure to get all that dust off and any debris. And we're actually, the reason why I'm undoing the straps is so I can open it up a little bit here and just check and see, because a lot of times, some of you may have noticed that it started to come apart. This one just barely started to come apart here. Some of you may have your Birkenstocks that have come apart quite a bit. So we're gonna just put a little little bit of rubber cement glue in there. Ah, oh, shoot, just had a bunch of drip on the footbed. No worries, we'll clean that off. Uh, just filled up that glue pot so it's a little full. But I'm gonna touch up any, any spots that, are, that may be coming up. Just like that. You know, sometimes we get these Birkenstocks in where the entire strap is basically coming unglued already and that's fine we'll fix that that's usually included with the resoling at the very least uh, with the footbed it definitely is when we're replacing the sole and the footbed um, in this video we're just doing the sole but we can also replace this cork footbed completely with a brand new one originally an original Birkenstock one replace leaving only just the upper straps or if you have a Boston model or one of the more closed ones um, just it leaves only the upper the rest of the bottom the cork footbed all gets replaced completely <clears throat> so uh, we'll do that for another video but for today we're just going to just going to do new soles on these and we're just putting on a rubber cement glue on this rubber cement is your best option for it definitely just because it is a flexible uh, flexible glue uh, so when you're wearing them it doesn't crack or crumble the uh, the downside definitely though of rubber cement and this is what they use at the factory originally too is rubber cement uh, we'll point that out but the downside of rubber cement is it can deactivate under fairly high temperatures. Uh, I can't remember the exact number, but it's closer to about you know 100, uh, about 100 degrees, I believe it was, that it starts to deactivate. Um, just a little over that, I believe, even too. But in other words, don't leave them in a hot car. You leave your you leave your Birkenstocks in a hot car, they are going to come apart and I've actually had pairs come in where the sole actually shrunk 
The rest of the footbed was intact, but the sole shrunk, I mean, like half an inch on the toe and the heel. So that's a full inch that it ended up shrinking altogether. You know, and that's from just sitting in a car. And that's here in Colorado. So if you're in a state that's uh, a little warmer than we are here in Colorado, yeah, your, your Birkenstocks will not survive your hot car. So definitely do not leave them in a car. Now, water also is another thing. It doesn't tend to deactivate the adhesive, but is actually very damaging to the cork. Um, a lot of people say they wear their Birkenstocks in, in the water all the time. You know, and that's, that's your choice if you want to. It is not recommended to do so. You just want to make sure you keep an eye uh, on that cork and put what's called cork seal on it. Um, Birkenstock makes one. There's a few other companies. Kelly's, I believe, is the one that we carry. I'll show you guys a bit later when we actually start applying it because that is included with the um, resoling. We'll put uh, cork sealant around the edges here of the cork to kind of prevent, uh, prevent uh, moisture from seeping in and protect it. Uh, shoot, and of course I forgot to undo this one and check the straps after I glued it. Talking too much. But anyways, that cork sealant will be your Birkenstock's best friend. So definitely when you get a pair of Birkenstocks, you know, if you're a first time buyer of Birkenstocks, always, always spend that few extra dollars to get that cork seal. And on average, I recommend putting it on once a year at least, depending how often you wear them, depending if they are your only pair of Birkenstocks and you don't alternate them and you wore them all season long, you may have to possibly even put it on twice, once in the beginning of the season, one at the end. Eventually it does get a little caked on, so it's kind of at your own discretion. You do have to keep your eye out on it. Um, if you start noticing dry spots, I don't know if the camera will really catch it, but there's a little, little bit of a lighter spot right there. That's actually the sealant that has worn off. This, this pair is a prime example. It seems to have been taken care of very well, but it's a prime example that right there is where that cork seal has just started to wear off. We're still going to apply a fresh new coat all along here because we're going to sand a little bit of it anyways just to kind of uh, clean it up, clean it off during the uh, process of sanding out the soles on these and trimming them. But um, anyways, before I continue to ramble on too much, that gives you an idea of what we end up doing. It doesn't seem like this one's splitting all that much. Just a little bit more here. Then we'll put some glue on there. And we're going to put a, our first coat of uh, rubber cement on. And it works as our base. Kind of like a primer almost. Both on the sole and the, uh, the sandal itself because that cork is gonna absorb most of that glue on the first run, as well as this uh, sole here. It's, again, a blown crepe material, so it's like a sponge. It soaks everything in. So the first coat goes on basically as a primer. Thinner coats are always better. That's what we go after. The thinner, the better, or less is more, that old saying. Put on a nice thin coat, even coat everywhere. Set it aside to dry, give it about uh, maybe 10-15 minutes to dry. And then we'll go through and apply a second coat. Now I'm not going to put on the second coat on camera. You guys don't want to watch me putting on multiple coats of glue. But I'll go ahead and do that off camera. The second coat we're going to allow it to dry for about 15-20 minutes um, on that. So. Once, uh, once that's all dry, then we're going to stick the sole into the oven and uh, activate that rubber cement. The rubber cement tends to activate under heat. Kind of funny, right? It deactivates under heat and it activates under heat. Kind of a little bit of both, in other words. So first time, though, that's your activation is with heat. Then once it's cooled and set and cured, it's going to deactivate with your heat from then on but anyways um, we're gonna allow that to sit and I'll meet you guys back when it's ready to put the sole onto the sandal itself all right we'll see you later all right so we're back here again at the workbench and I got the sole all heated up I just took it out of the oven Let me stick the other one in there real quick and then I'm just gonna place it right there just kind of center it there's no wrong or bad way. Now this one is definitely 
oversized. I kind of cut out this piece a little too quickly, so you know it, it really, <clears throat> really quickly ended up getting too big. In other words, so I wasn't being very efficient on my material today. But um, I'm gonna go take this over to the press real quick. So hang on just a second. All right, I'm over at the press. Some noise here. But this is to give you an idea of what the press does. We just alternate between the different spots and just press it just a little bit. You don't wanna overdo it because it may damage the cork. Now this press has different attachments and sizes as well of these different lasts. So we just kind of switch them out. Well, that kind of gives you an idea of what it does. Just presses it down really qu quite quickly. I don't want to leave it on there too much because this sponge here, well the sole, the spongy sole, once it's nice and warm, it's very malleable, sticks very well, but the problem is that it actually can end up deforming under too much extended pressure. So we can't leave it on this press for too long. Um, we just gotta press it just enough to get any kind of air pockets or bubbles out. So now that this one's all pressed, the other one's in the oven, I'm gonna take you guys over to what's called our 5-in-1 to cut off all that axis there. So see you guys there. All right, so we're here at our five and one now. Um, usually I have my trash can here on the bottom. You can see here to the side, it's kind of overflowing at the moment. I gotta take it out to the dumpster here as soon as I'm done recording this part. But um, it quite literally does multiple things for us. It's a multi-tool. Sorry about the squeaking, but it's cut, we're cutting off the all that access trim as close as we can before actually trimming it out. So, all the way around, just like that, and there we go. Got a trim, well, sorry, got it all cut out and then leaves a good, good bit behind there, but um, again, that still has to be trimmed out. I'm gonna let this cool off for, you know, just a, about a minute or so. All right, so we're back here at my machine. I just wanted to show you guys real quick what we're going to be doing as far as stages. We're going to first hit the edges a little bit on our 24 grit sandpaper here. And then we're going to move on to what's called the trimmer. This is equivalent to small little blades that spin very, very fast. And it'll help us kind of cut that sole down a little bit closer to that cork foot bed and the leather upper. Uh, it, kind of tends to look a bit nicer also because it's got this little lip here that kind of sticks out and looks a little more original a lot of cobbler shops you'll actually see they tend to just sand it down they go from the 24 grit to 100 grit sandpaper and then finally what's something called a numb keg i'll show you guys real quick this is what's called a numb keg it just spins around like that we'll use the numb keg a little bit but just to touch it up some but this kind of gives you an idea of you know how we'd rather do it just because that little lip there definitely gives it more of an original look so I'll go ahead and put my camera back up and uh, I'll s start recording how I'm doing this I'll just do one on camera for you guys to get an idea of what it looks like and uh, we'll continue on on the next machine and next step all right we'll see you in a second all right let's go ahead and get started it's about to get a little noisy here I'm gonna turn my hat around so doesn't get in the way. By the way, I tend to wear a hat kind of like that, so I have to turn around for you guys to be able to see, and it doesn't get in the way of the camera. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, it's the first stage. We got a little bit closer now to the edges there, so. Still a little bit left over. Now we're gonna move on here. So we got the first one done now at the at this stage basically 
Now you can see that I was moving around, trying to be very careful here. Um, this, not a lot of cobblers do that. It takes a very, very steady hand to use a trimmer, especially on a Birkenstock sole because of how soft this sole is. Um, it's, uh, it takes a lot of, lot of practice. There's no stopper, no bumper, no anything that gives us kind of a stopping point for this trimmer not to go too deep or too far in somewhere. Um, there is a stopper basically to be able to trim out, you know, leather soles, like say these leather soled western boots. We're able to trim them out on here and it's there's a stopper going, you know, in and out the depth that we need it to, the thickness of the material, I'm sorry. But for a Birkenstock sole, I mean, I can, I can adjust that gauge, but I always go on the highest setting because I don't want this little stopper here. Sorry, I cut out there, um, but anyways. Like I was saying, there's no stopper here that will prevent it from sliding too far forward or too deep or anything. So it takes a really steady, steady hand. And you know, I can do it like most other shops do and just strictly sand it out, but it looks a lot more original. You can see that little gap there. And that's, that's what they look like when they come out of the factory. They have that little bit of a gap. Now again, I'm not finished with this one yet. I still have yet another stage of a little bit of sanding. It's kind of like touch-up sanding on that numb keg pad mainly, just to give you an idea. But um, there you go. You could definitely definitely see a huge, huge difference. Now, some shops will say you can actually stop at this point, but uh, I'm definitely not done yet. I've still got a little ways to go on it. So like I said, I'll go ahead and finish this one off camera, and then uh, we'll move on to the next machine. You'll see me working on that then. All right, we'll see you in a second. Alright, so we're over at our other machine now, um, and we're going to go ahead and use the numb keg. Now I'm going to turn on the whole machine, not just the numb keg. Here, I'll show you what it sounds like. That's the numb keg, and it's, it's very light. I mean, it's not very, you know, strong machine. It's very delicate. You know, it's, it's kind of like a finisher, basically, for us. And like I said, we're just going to be trying to finish it out. Um, but we got to run the whole machine because it has a ventilation system, ventilation tube right up here that will kind of suck in a lot of that dust. I also have my shop vac here I'm going to have to turn on too, so it, it's going to get a little bit more noisy, so just bear with me if you want to watch this, otherwise you can fast forward the video if so too. Um, otherwise, we'll go ahead and get started. I'll do just again, just one on video, and then you know I'll meet you guys back up at the workbench once I'm done sanding out on here. So let's get started. if you watch through that with the noise but you saw me do a first pass here just going like that there and that was just to kind of clean up the edges a little bit and then I flipped it over I did another pass to kind of uh, take off that very corner piece sometimes we get a little bit of uh, fraying I'll we'll actually be able to show you on this one but you get little small chunks like that that kind of stick up and I like to get those off you know some shops again they tend to ignore that you know because it's more of an aesthetics thing but I, I prefer to have a bit of a cleaner look kind of like that right there you know um, on my third pass you'd see me kind of hitting that uh, cork just a little bit again this is a very very light grit sandpaper and it's a finisher and I just kind of hit that cork just enough to get any access uh, cork sealant or adhesives or anything on it off so I just kind of cleaned that off and um, again we're gonna be putting a cork sealant on it as well so I'll go ahead and do the other one off video and I'll meet you at the workbench in a second all right we'll see you in a sec all right we're back here at the workbench now 
Now at this point I'm gonna actually undo this very last buckle here because we were using that to hang them up while they were drying. But um, again, I'll show you guys real quick. Kind of see that gap right there? That's kind of what we were after, you know. Just to just to keep it as original as possible. We didn't want to sand it too much or too flush to that cork foot bed. You still want to have a nice little gap there. But anyways, taking apart the straps at this point, we're all done with the sole basically. We're just gonna kind of brush it off. You know, we'll take a horsehair brush and just brush it get the dust off of it but I've already blown it off with some compressed air to get most of it off but at this stage we're gonna take a piece of our uh, crepe here this is actual condensed natural crepe um, not blown like what this is pretty much and it helps us go through and take off any any little bit of glue residue that may have um, may have gone missed or gone onto the upper now again the cork area we don't have to go through it anyways because it's it's cork we just sanded it a little bit to clean it up um, the other thing is I, I'll mention is that cork sealant that we'll be putting on uh, there's another trick that some cobblers tend to use and I do have a few customers that ask for that in particular but we'll get to that once we're doing the cork sealant all right so we've got that taken care of all right now, our next step is to take care of this upper, and we like to use the Saphir Beauty De Cure line, the, um, the Renovator Cream, because it's water-based, it has mink oil in it, and a little bit of beeswax, too. So it's going to help us clean this up a little bit, at least the leather. It's gonna condition it, and that beeswax is gonna help protect it for a little while and give it, give it a little bit of a shimmer. Now, on shoes, usually I tend to use a brush to apply this a what's called a dauber brush but because we've got so much straps and not too much surface area either I'm just gonna use a regular towel on it we're not needing to scrub it in or anything we're just lightly applying it going through if there's a few spots that need more than others by all means definitely um, definitely will scrub a little bit more Make sure to get under those buckles. It's always missed under those buckles. A lot of people tend to miss that. And we'll, we'll try to at least uh, get in there as best we can, just just at least a little bit. You know, extend that life expectancy of these. That mink oil is what's going to really hydrate this leather. Um, now, I would like to mention at this point that some people do realize that the footbed in here is actually lined with leather um, as well. You don't actually want to apply this onto the footbed. Uh, there's a few reasons why. One, because it's got beeswax in here, it is going to make the footbed a lot slippery, a lot more slippery. Um, also, your feet will tend to sweat because of that. The leather is breathable, but when you start putting um, waxes of any kind on there, it takes a little bit from that breathability away. And you want that cork to breathe some too. Um, and again, the other thing is, of course, because your foot perspires, you're gonna have sweat. And some of this stuff will, it, well, it will wear out very quickly, one. And two, it's going to get a little bit on your foot. And if you're one of those who tend to wear Birkenstocks with socks, um, I'm not gonna judge. It's a little funny looking, but I won't judge you for it. Um, plenty of people do that. I've seen some people in wintertime do it as well. But you don't want this stuff getting all over your socks, even on your foot too. I mean, it's not harmful. It's all natural ingredients, so it's definitely not harmful. But it's just, you're, you don't want it on your feet. You're gonna, you're gonna feel that there's something, something stuck on your feet a little bit. So you definitely don't want to apply anything to that footbed. That, leather on there is very well treated uh, with vegetable oils I'm assuming at least vegetable oils because usually that's what they treat footbeds with um, but Birkenstock hasn't quite said it yet at least they haven't answered to me yet but um, that vegetable oil is going to do basically everything you need that to do for a long period of time worst of the worst case scenario if you really really wanted to treat that footbed Start out by sanding it out with a light piece of sandpaper, like that there. I got little scrap pieces that I use all the time. Uh, about 100, 120 grit. And quite literally just go through and just sand it up like that, right there. You know, it'll rough it up. You know, that'll be plenty enough. If you want to take it a step up from that, again, 
it's not recommended because you're probably going to need that footbed replaced anyways at some point with the footbed replacement it includes of course that leather piece because it's already attached but if you really want to you could use this stuff uh, the Saphir Medal Dior um, sole guard it's actually intended to go on the bottom of leather soles but you can use this on inside here because this is vegetable oil actually it's highly highly refined vegetable oil so it'll definitely treat the footbed nicely and uh, even give it a little bit of waterproofing as well and it won't make your footbed all slippery it's not going to come off because that uh, highly treated oil uh, vegetable oil will penetrate very well into that leather hi Sebastian he's got blue hair and an orange face guess he's rooting for Broncos this year go Broncos <laughs> Now it was, uh, he was at a friend's house and they went somewhere, or Taekwondo, I believe yeah, it was. Yeah, Taekwondo because it was circus, they, uh, so I painted my face as a lion. As a tiger. tiger it was a tiger. Tiger lion -ish, Tiger lion-ish, whatever. Yeah. All right, anyways, you, lot, you made me forget where I was at. All right, um, I'll be right back. I forgot something. Sorry about, sorry about that. I knew I was forgetting something. My horsehair brush. We're just going to go over and buff this just a little bit you know, give it just at least a little bit of a shimmer I guess sometimes when you buff it just ever so slightly that uh, helps out and then at this point we're gonna go through the sole go all around the edges make sure any excess dust comes out do the same thing on this one now if you've got renovator cream from Saphir like we just used over here you know you, you can definitely use it on a wide variety of uh of different leathers um, now there are some leathers that you probably wouldn't want to use it on but i'll be making a video talking a little bit more in depth about the different creams the polishes what you should use it on what you definitely don't want to use certain products on and so just stay tuned for that if uh, you're watching this when this video has been posted up for some time and i've already created a good amount of videos just uh you know look through and find um Saphir uh, product uh, product recommendations or something like that. I I don't even know what I would call the video quite yet, but that's what you'd want to search for if you really want to get in more into depth with the uh, Saphir products or even other products too. Now at this point we're basically all done. We technically could stop, but you know that's not us. Our shop we'd like to take it as far as we can basically. And we're going to use uh, Kelly's Cork Renew. Now, Birkenstock has their own as well. Um, we've liked the Kelly's line quite a bit, mainly, and that's what we tend to stick to. Hang on just a sec. Sorry about that. I guess somebody else got it. But uh, anyways, we like to use the Kelly's. It's a little more readily available, at least to us, um, because we have local suppliers that tend to get it in, and we can pick it up fairly quickly from them but it's quite literally the same stuff I've tested it out multiple times it wears the same goes on exactly the same goes on white you know just looks like a white paste you can see right there but it dries clear so it's a good indicator that it's dry and ready to go now, as I mentioned, I was going to talk about another thing, another technique that a lot of other cobbler shops use. We do as well. You could actually use the rubber cement as your cork seal. It's a lot stronger, it'll last longer, but the main, down, main downside to it is that, again, it is rubber cement. And if your two shoes basically touch together, they're going to get stuck. Well, not stuck they're just gonna start pulling on each other and you're gonna pull off little bits and pieces of that uh, rubber cement as well um, potentially even some of the uh, oh, sorry it's cut out on me there but uh, yeah so it will definitely get stuck together and you don't want that to happen and we're just applying a single thin coat you know, some people have said that, should I apply a second coat? No, you don't want to put a second coat on, um, just because it kind of defeats the purpose. You want as thin of a coat as possible. If you have, you know, slight little glob areas, you're fine. It's just gonna dry clear and you're gonna have this little clear glob, basically. But, you know, we, we highly recommend just trying to have as even of a coat as possible, fairly thin, you know, you want it to look a little white. You don't want to brush it where it's just going to be bare minimal. But 
anyways, that's kind of what it looks like there. Alright. Oh shoot, I just splattered some. Alright, sorry, I just ended up splattering some on me. It's got a little applicator brush. But, um, kind of gives you an idea of what it should be looking like when it goes on. So we're just gonna set these aside to dry. I'll probably just stick them here in front of my fan. Um, you, you could use a fan, just make sure you're not sticking them in direct sunlight or anything too hot. You're gonna you're gonna do some damage again to your broken stocks. Now I haven't talked too much about the cork footbed just because again we haven't we're not replacing it today. But to give you an idea, if you ever wear your cork footbed down into that cork a little bit. We can replace little small pieces that may be missing or worn out to an extent. We have uh, sheets of cork like this here that we get in and we cut them out, we put them on there, shape them and everything, sand it out and make sure it's as flush as possible, as possible before applying the sole. But again, that is, there is a limit to that extent, you know, it, it does cost a little bit extra because cork is a bit of a more expensive material. So it can sometimes be a little bit extra to build up that heel um, or the toe if you're somebody who wears out the toe a little bit more. Uh, but that just comes to show that it's better to catch it in time. Once your foot, once you have worn through that uh, sole right there, don't try to hold out another maybe week or so. If you've worn, if you've worn out that sole already, definitely, definitely try not wearing those. Uh, that pair of Birkenstocks anymore until you actually have that handled. Sorry about that, my Hello. battery died here. I've got Janelle, my sister here, helping out. But uh, I don't even know where I left off. Uh, oh, talking about the cork buildups. Anyways, so there is a limitation to how much we can build up definitely and what we can put back together. But you can see that it's already starting to dry fairly clear. There's a few spots that are still a little, a little damp. But it gives you an idea of um, of what that cork sealant does. It really helps seal up that cork and protect it and gives it some nutrition back as well. Um, but definitely, definitely, if you have a pair of Birkenstocks or plan to buy a pair, make sure you get some cork renewed. Whether it's the Birkenstock one, the Kelly's, I think Feebing's even makes one. There's a few other companies I think also that make cork, cork renew or cork sealant also. Make sure you spend, you know, whatever, anywhere between four to eight dollars, whatever it may be, to help extend that life. Um, if you really want that rubber cement put on on the edges as a cork sealant, we can do it. I mean, I have a few guys that specify they want that, but I don't recommend it too much. That cork sealant is kind of a good indicator that it's time to, you know, get your Birkenstocks checked out at least or examine them when you start to notice that the cork is looking a little more dry and not like this, giving it a shiny glaze. Um, but anyways, like I said, this is uh, just a full sole that we're doing on these. Um, you have a lot of options that you can do with the Birkenstock, you know, just heels, full soles, upgrading that full sole to like a Vibram or something else that may be a little more dense and last longer um, or have better grip. Uh, you can replace the footbed as well. Now as far as footbed options, there's only one. You want to stick to the original Birkenstock footbed. You don't want to use a knockoff. You don't want to use, you know, an alternative or anything for the footbed. Birkenstock is the king for a fully finished product in the support in this well in the industry of support featured shoes they have some of the best support features you can possibly find on the market they've got a really long nice high arch they've got a good cupped heel they've got your little side arch here they've got a toe bar and even the um, the little section here that curls up it helps protect your toes for a longer period of time definitely too um, as far as strap repairs, there are there are things that can be done, but again, there are limitations. We get a few pairs every now and then where a dog chewed them up, unfortunately. We can't make them look as original as possible. Well, we can't make them look perfect and original. We can try to get as close as we can, but again, it's limitations, especially if a dog is damaged or chewed it. Um, but the buckles, those can be replaced as well. That's always uh, something that may happen. But these buckles, they're very sturdy. They tend to hold on for a long period of time. They actually run four little uh, clinching staples on the inside right there. 
that um, that tend to hold those buckles down so you shouldn't be losing them all that easily uh, but if you do we can definitely replace them for you or if the buckle gets damaged which it shouldn't um, we can handle that but anyways thanks for watching um, uh, I know I've been babbling on a lot I tend to talk a little too much I guess but this is an idea for you of how to get a new set of soles how we do it and uh, we'll see you guys next time uh, like I said I'll make another video for you uh, about resoling and putting a new footbed on as well uh, stay tuned for that subscribe um, put the little push the little subscribe button wherever it may be I have no idea I, I'm new to this I'm a cobbler I'm not a uh, videographer or editor by trait so I do my best but otherwise subscribe um, go to our website cobblersplus.com check us out on Facebook or Instagram as well uh, if you have any other questions send us a message give us a call if you'd like to ship in a pair or if you're local feel free to stop by if you're shipping in go to our website um, and go to the mail-in order section and fill out the PDF file with all your contact information ship them out once we receive them we'll give you a call and uh, talk over the repair process with you uh, again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.